Twitter and in Tallahassee in the panhandle right now. Um, they're starting to report their first batch of power mm -hmm. outages uh, and they're up over a thousand uh, and it all happened pretty much with the flip of a switch and it, the same thing kind of happened in Central Florida too. It was we were we were doing OK uh, up until about seven or eight o'clock and then yeah. we started getting some of those strong feeder bands in and, and we've had those tornadoes all day. Uh, but all of a sudden the numbers started skyrocketing. Um, I think some of the warning signs were there all day today. Uh, but uh, when when we talk about takeaways from Hurricane Irma, um, I'm sure we're going to have lasting images of linemen, uh, people camped out uh, from other states come in to restore our power. Um, we saw this after Charlie Francis and Gene, this huge campground mm -hmm. at the Hialeah in Castleberry uh, with uh, enormous air conditioned tents for thousands of men and women who came to turn the power back on. I envision the exact same thing happening again. Oh, indeed. And for first and foremost, we have our viewers in mind here because we know that the majority of you, if not all of you, are without power unless you have a generator. I, Jim, I can't even tell you how many emails I received saying, OK, folks, you know, we're listening. You know, continue to walk us through exactly what time it's going to be coming to our area and how fierce those winds are. So the power is the number one issue for so many people because, you know, you're you're in the dark. It's 1:30 in the morning almost and you're riding this out and you don't know exactly the details. So join us on Facebook, join us on the mobile app, and we're going to break it down for you. And so let's get started. 1.30 a.m. Meredith McDonough here along with Jim Payne. We're riding out this thing together with Hurricane Irma. Uh, we want to talk that it's a Cat 2 storm with 100 mile per hour winds moving through the central Florida area. All right, let's get over to uh, begin with team weather coverage. Uh, Chief Meteorologist Tony Badolfi and Meteorologist Amy Sweezy. You know, Amy, I was watching you and Dave and, and, and Kyle before I came in, and, and I knew it was going to be a busy busy day and a busy night. And I had no idea it was going to be this busy. But I, for me right now, we really have to focus in on that big band of wind with the eye that's uh, continuing to move into almost Sumter County now. Yeah, no tornado warnings right now. There's a tornado watch. I think we're not totally done with our <laughs> tornado warnings for the rest of the morning. But definitely this line here uh, that you're tracking in Kissimmee moving up toward the attractions, that's our biggest concern. Yeah, so let's hone in on that right now as I walk over to the key here I want to focus in on what is uh, currently uh, beginning to take place here while I'm at the wall there uh, there's Winter Haven we had that eye come through a short time ago but what I want to do is I want to zoom in the northern Polk County now far southern uh, Lake County and Sumter County it's right here the core of the winds are, are really beginning to ratchet up from Citrus Ridge along 33 uh, back west towards Zephyr Hills we talked about the wind gust at Lakeland of 94 over towards the Orlando International Airport Port. Uh, we've had winds at as high as uh, 78 miles an hour. So as we time this out, there's Bay Lake about 155, South Claremont around 159, East Ridge High School now coming in at about 211, and then as we work our way up towards Claremont and Mascot, 213 to about 223, about 45 minutes to an hour from now. Then we shoot over to the east. Let's take a look at the Kissimmee Orlando corridor there, and you can see the timing here as it's moving up at about 14 miles an hour. You've got Meadow Woods at 138 about seven minutes from now. Uh, you're probably already hearing the winds on the on the on the burst up there. Dr. Phillips at about 144. Windermere about 154. Oak Ridge, the strongest of the winds coming in and about 157, then Winter Garden, Pine Hills, and Ferndale from 219 to about 225. One of the things that Eric and I have been doing all night has been highlighting that fan and that uh, little red corridor with the strongest winds. Let's kind of take a look at that here one more time before I toss the baton back over to Amy. And in that uh, time frame there, uh, we had uh, Claremont to Bushnell to Leesburg right around 2 to 4 o'clock in the morning. And then north of the villages here, uh, we've had the winds, the strongest of the winds with Irma Center uh, coming in after about uh, 4 o'clock in the morning uh, on into Marion County, roughly between 5 and 6 o'clock. A lot of other entities going on with Irma. With, with uh, more on that, here's meteorologist Amy Sweezy. All right, we are uh, going to continue, uh, obviously, trying the big picture of the storm as well. I know so many of you are probably listening on the radio right now or trying to watch us on social media because you don't have power. I know a lot of your TVs have gone out if you've got satellite or cable difficult. Uh, so we'll try to explain things here for those of you who can't actually see what's happening. The center of the storm right now is uh, basically over Polk County and Tony was zoomed in on the radar to the uh, leading edge of what would be the eye. Although I tell you, it's starting to look more like this long spring 
sprawled out line band of wind, almost like straight line winds as opposed to actual eye of a hurricane. But uh, we do have these feeder bands still wrapping around it, and that is our next concern for uh, the potential tornado warnings for the rest of the morning. The center of the storm has the wind still near 100. That is, of course, in the Kissimmee area heading toward the attractions. And then we have these gusty winds in the rest of central Florida, and the whole system right now is moving to the north at 14 miles per hour. Now, the official forecast brings it up uh, basically through Sumter County, Lake County, and Marion, the center of the storm, and then it starts to lose a little bit of steam by 8 o'clock Monday morning, so in about seven hours, but even by 8 a.m., it's still expected to have uh, winds near the center at 75. That's still a Category 1 hurricane, and then as the storm heads up uh, near Tallahassee to the right and east of Tallahassee, it is expected to curve a little bit to the north and west and then head up through Georgia. That's when it will start to lose a lot more of its steam as far as the winds and also the rain. But it is going to be a big rainmaker all the way up uh, into the central part of the United States. Now, this is an interesting thing. This is something that we've been watching now for a couple of days. The line that's on the map here is the actual path, uh, the coordinates that were taken of Irma as it's made its way northward. And this morning, about 10 minutes after 9, okay, now it's actually yesterday morning, uh, that uh, at 9:10 the storm uh, made landfall in the lower keys. And then, of course, it moved northward near Naples and Marco Island. And then we've had all these kind of wobbles and jogs back and forth, but the overall movement is just kind of making its way northward. And that's what's happening with the storm right now with all of those big hurricane force winds out around it. So that's why we've been telling you all week, all of Central Florida needs to prepare for these hurricane force winds because we're all going to be impacted in some way, but right near the center of the storm is where the biggest winds are going to be, and that's what we're getting right now in Polk County. That's what we're about to see in Lake Sumter, Orange counties, and then as that line lifts northward, still going to be dealing with those hurricane force winds in Marion County and then points northward until it falls apart. Now, our tornado watch has, uh, you know, gone down a little bit. It's only a couple of counties that are left. Flagler and and Marion are included in that. Uh, that is for the potential for these uh, outer bands to cause some uh, tornado warnings. Uh, basically, when the you know storm continues to lift to the north, we'll still get some rotation wrapping around it. And so that's why we've got that tornado watch that's actually in effect until 11 o'clock on Monday. So we still have several hours to go here. Uh, the strongest line, of course, right over Celebration and Kissimmee, Citrus Ridge, uh, basically just south of Disney World and SeaWorld, Universal, Orlando. Uh, 10, 15 minutes away, this biggest uh, gust of wind is moving northward. 90, 100 mile per hour gust possible inside of there. Now, the biggest thing we need to say, I know everybody has been, uh, you know, stuck at home basically for a couple of days now. We've told you to stay inside and off the roads. We want to encourage you to do that on Monday. You've been cooped up. As soon as those winds start to die down at noon on Monday, you're going to want to get out and start assessing the damage. Please, please, please stay inside if you can. There's going to be trees down. We've already got gotten so many reports of damage. People's houses are damaged. Their cars are damaged from the trees that are down. Power outages, power lines are down, and you can't always see them uh, in all of the debris that's out there and the damage. So let the crews do their work tomorrow. Let them assess the damage. There's also going to be some flooding as well, so please don't drive through any of those flooded roads. Uh, also a very dangerous situation, too. So a lot of the injuries that happen after a hurricane, they don't actually happen in the hurricane. They happen after the fact when people get out too soon. So we heard the governor say it. We heard a lot of our amazing you know, city and county officials say it as we were leading into Irma. Please just stay inside as we continue through Monday. When the sun comes out, the winds start to die down after the noon hour. Uh, that is when you need to just let the crews do their work. Tony. All right, Amy, thanks again. That's uh, some very helpful tips there, especially as we get into the cleanup mode. I want to go back to the radar, though, one more time. I cannot stress this enough. The center of the circulation now has just brushed Winter Haven. It's moving into far northern and northwestern portions there of Polk County. Uh, but there's a flank there that extends from the northeastern uh, eye there back towards Kissimmee and Orlando. It's in that entire swath in the northern reaches there of that eye wall that we are looking at sustained winds right now of 50 to 60. 
70 miles an hour with gusts when this comes through of 80 to 90 miles an hour. That extends as far east as the Orlando attractions. attractions. It also includes uh, Celebration, Champions Gate, uh, Kissimmee, Winter Garden, Windermere, Claremont, Leesburg, and the Villages as this continues to lift from south to north. Jim and Merritt, it's going to be a very difficult time here over the next uh, two to three hours as this continues to lift north. Yeah, mm -hmm. heading uh, some of the major population centers in central Florida. Yeah, we'll stay on top of it because uh, it's coming for us too, really at the same time. And I wanted to pick up on one thing that Amy was talking about, the danger after the storm. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember which hurricane in 2004 it was, but it was one of the three and one of the first people to lose their lives in central Florida uh, was right after the storm mm -hmm. came through. Uh, there were down power lines in the yard mm -hmm. and everybody thought that they weren't live Live. and it turns out that one was uh, and you can't tell by looking so uh, please to heed her cautions uh, you know take your time and uh, be careful out there and and seriously don't go out barefoot um, that's that's what we do in Florida I understand that but just don't do it well you're, you're neighborly you want to help and, and we totally understand that and get that we do too but you just let the officials do their job that's the bottom line just sit it sit at home wait it out and, and let them do the work uh, we want to take some video here live video a uh, 22nd floor of 55 West. This is in downtown Orlando. I'm trying to look at this up closely here, and as you can imagine, folks, for those listening, it just does not look pretty. Yeah. This is a balcony view, Jim, overlooking downtown. Uh, we're not used to seeing it like this. No, not at all. You can sort of see some of the trees down there. Our friend Tom Hines shot this video. Um, bring up the sound a little bit, and yeah, and listen to this. Yeah, there's, there's a reason Tony tells you uh, that you don't want to be that high uh, in a building. You don't want to be on the second floor in a two-story house when we have a big wind event like this. He's on the 22nd floor. He gets uh, extra exposure to this, um, but uh, we, we thank Tom for shooting this and getting it to us safely. Gail Pascal brown she's outside the West 2 studios right now. Gail, we're talking about the strongest winds here moving through our area. What's it like out there? Oh, my goodness. It is very windy out here. As a matter of fact, I've gone around a few places today in Central Florida, but outside our West 2 News studios, this is the most frightening. I'm watching these three palm trees, these large ones right here, as well as the trees dancing behind me. Uh, the last time that I talked to you, I was actually uh, right off Millennia Boulevard out in the shopping plaza, and there was a lot of activity going there. Then it died down. But this, this is really kicking up. I wanted to let you know that we took John Young Parkway all the way here uh, to our West 2 studios, and the drive there was very dark, obviously, because a lot of the street lights were out. There was a lot of debris that was on the uh, roadway, and I did see at least one down power line. So that, again, gives credence as to why you should not be out here driving in this weather. And, and that was a good thing, too. We didn't see anybody on the roads except for one vehicle. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is we want you to just to stay safe. Amy has stressed that so much as far as staying safe and staying off the roadway, even after something like this blows over or, or it could obviously trees could be down. Um, Earlier today, I was also in Winter Springs where there was a lot of tree debris and you could hear the sirens going off and that was a little interesting as well. Folks, that's why all of this equipment, technology and people are here to try to make sure that you are safe. We're keeping an eye on Irma and we're going to tell you everything that you need to know about it, whether you're within the sound of my voice or you're listening to the radio or whatever you're having to do to get the information. We're doing it here at West. Back to you in the studio. Gail, before you go, I'd like to ask, what was more unnerving for you, to be in that Winter Springs neighborhood when the sirens were going with that tornado warning or to be in these heavy winds right now? Well, I'm going to tell you, these heavy, these heavy winds are kind of threatening. The sirens were just eerie in itself, just to hear them going off. I mean, if you, you know, you don't hear them until it's that seasonal time to, to have that hurricane or whatever. That was really like a point of interest of saying, hey, you better be careful. You better be prepared. Get out of here and get some cover. So uh, right now, let's just say they're on equal footing. <laughs> and Gail, when you look back on the day, and it's been a long day, actually a long couple of days, yeah. what, what stands out most for you so far? Well, I'm going to tell you what grabbed my attention, if I heard you correctly, has got to be at the shelter, since that's where I was the most. And to see the people who are really frightened, really concerned about Hurricane Irma, to be there and to take up all their belongings and to go straight there to have some kind of cover and some kind of comfort, that to me was one of the things that you just don't forget. You don't forget the little kids' faces who are painting or 
clutch to their moms. You don't forget, you know, the elderly couple that's sitting side by side and one may have some medical issues. You don't forget all the people who are running around trying to make sure the volunteers that these folks are in their comfort zone at a time of a lot of anxiety concerning Hurricane Irma, Jim. Yeah, they're people, and they deserve our respect, and they deserve our care. Absolutely. Good and, work. Exactly, and I, I said it to her earlier today in the newsroom. I gave Gail a big hug and said, I can't thank you enough, because that truly showed the, the emotion, the, the, the feelings that people have during a time like this, but then to see them come together and, and be in those shelters and say, okay, we're going to ride this out, get through it together, and stay calm, because you can see some of those sites where, unfortunately, you know, we saw this today in Miami, uh, but Jim, the looting going on in some of these locations. Yeah, we've seen the good stuff, and we We've seen yeah. the not so good stuff, and uh, this was the scene in Miami today. And you you can see that uh, um, this was pretty much after, right after the storm had passed. So mm -hmm. it finally had just cleared out, uh, and folks, uh, uh, word spread like wildfire. And you can see what happened. It's uh, it's all the shoes that you can carry in that case. Um, I think this was one of those. Uh, it was like an Academy Sports store, or something like that. That uh, somebody just smashed a window, smashed a door, and people just started coming out of nowhere and and raiding the place and unfortunately uh, with with so much good happening uh, especially here in Florida today and, and so much good on the way uh, these scenes are unfortunate but they do happen uh, also going on the power outages that is happening widespread we're talking in the millions at this point um, dare I say unprecedented numbers we shall see but they are pretty pretty hefty yeah let's uh, check in with West 2 Stuart Moore who's gonna break it all down for us this uh, skyrocketing number guys is really gonna tell the story over the next several days and even weeks because it's gonna to take a while to get all these people back online. Let's just take a look right now uh, at the total statewide is now up to 5.1 million people who do not have power. Again, 8.4 million people have utilities in the state of Florida. 5.1 million of them are in the dark right now. And Irma is still making its way through the majority top half of the state now crossing through Central Florida. Let's break it down county by county so you can see exactly who is suffering the most. Orange County, 226,000 customers uh, without power right now as the, the outer eye wall and the strongest part of the storm is just starting to move through Orange County. And we can switch it now to Seminole County. Seminole County is also suffering major outages, 118,000. We actually got a report earlier of uh, one of the first reports that we got of um, those big transformers was blowing was out of Seminole County, uh, just a row of them going up as those winds continue to increase. If we switch things now over to, um, I think we've got Brevard County at 260,000 customers. Uh, without power right now. That was the area where we saw the majority of those tornado warnings as it was coming through our area in Volusia County. At one point earlier today, I have on my paper 15,000 people without power. You can see just how much that has jumped uh, to now that 141,000 people in Volusia County without power. You saw that video that Claire Metz sent in just a while ago with those transformers that were blowing, those heavy winds and strong bands of rain that were coming down. Uh, that's directly attributed to that from 15,000 to 141,000 in just about the span of about four hours, guys. Now let's move things over to Lake County where we're looking at 54,000 people that are in the dark right now. 6,800 of them were earlier. Now they are also starting to get the worst of the bands over in the Claremont area. You can see as Irma's wall is starting to get closer and closer to them. Flagler County, that number earlier was 7,800. Now it's almost to 40,000, 39,868 people in the dark. Up in Marion County, uh, to the northern part of the, uh, the viewing area where they are still going to experience uh, Irma's wrath for several more hours. 68,000 customers are in the dark. In Osceola County, uh, we've also got some new numbers out of there as well. 47,000 people in the dark. That's where uh, they are starting to pull away from Irma, at least from the core part of Irma, uh, as the storm continues to move to the north. And finally, Polk County, 86,000 people in the dark right now as Irma has mostly passed through that area. They still have to do with the backside of the storm. Guys, this is a record amount of people that are in the dark. At least this will be what Irma is definitely going to be known for moving forward. 5.1 million statewide. We've seen all those crews that have filed in from across the country and our own crews that have mobilized to help get that power back on. But when you have a number as big as 5.1 million, it's going to take quite a while to turn the lights back on for everyone. Jim, some people are going to wait more than a month to get their power back. Mm -hmm. Easy, easy in this case. So uh, when Meredith and I sat down on the set about 12 hours ago, uh, most of the conventional wisdom had this storm tracking basically towards Tampa. Right. Uh, but nature figured out a different way to do it. Uh, we've been on top of this uh, now, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a critical point in the development of Hurricane Irma because the most powerful part of the storm is really in the 
heart of the Orlando metro area right now. And Tony, I want to bring you in here for the folks that are listening. I've received so many emails. The power is out. Uh, here's what one of them was saying. You know, we cannot see, but we can hear. What will it be as it comes up the I-4 corridor? So let's just take them through that. Yeah, well, let, let's drive the radar ride now. And for those that can see, maybe we can go back and forth between the radar and some, some live pictures. But uh, uh, meteorologist Kyle Grabin joining the, uh, meteorologist Amy Sweezy and myself right now. What I want to do is, uh, I know a lot of folks of you can't see this, but you can hear us on Magic 107.7 as we're simulcasting. I want to begin now along the Four Corners area. That would be Southern Lake County, Southern Sumter County. We'll zoom it in here and kind of get real close and kind of get real descriptive here. The strongest winds here are, are running right around 75 to 95 with gusts potentially as high as 105. Uh, this big core here is going to be continuing to lift back to the north. Let's go ahead and widen that out just a little bit, Kyle. And what he's going to do is he knows that this whole feature is lifting off to to the north at about 14 miles an hour. So what I'm going to ask him to do is just basically draw uh, what we call a big storm fan and lift that up to the north at about 14 miles an hour and then kind of give folks that are in Sumter County uh, and, and Lake County uh, uh, the best time or the best estimate of when we think the strongest winds are going to move in. And when you look at Lacucci, Pine Ridge Elementary School in South Claremont, you're talking about 240 to 245. Then we extend our view farther to the east in to northwestern Osceola County, down towards the attractions, over towards the southern extent there of Lake Apopka. And we'll zoom in, in there and then kind of put that fan just south of Claremont, back over towards the western side of downtown Orlando. Again, this area uh, just extends as far north now as the Florida Turnpike moving north and about 14 miles an hour, that puts the strongest potential winds of, of 75 to potentially 100 mile an hour winds through Lake County uh, between now and about 241. On into southwestern Orange County, we've got SeaWorld at about 155 coming up on you right about now in four minutes. Dr. Phillips at 159, nine minutes from now, the core of the roughest winds will move into your area. Claremont Winter Garden, uh, just got a couple of text messages from folks in Winter Garden saying, my house is beginning to vibrate. There's okay. Ocoee, Pine Hills, and Evan High Schools, 228, 234, and 241. Jim and Meredith, once this comes through, the worst of the winds for the night are going to be over in that uh, that little strip of landscape right there. And it's no picnic there uh, into East Orange County. We're talking about Azalea Park, Union Park, Conway, back towards Wedgefield, Bitlow, uh, uh, over towards Dallas Boulevard, Southeast Orange County. We're looking at 50 to 70 mile an hour winds with a, a potential gust there just east of the 417 Dean Road, uh, Alafaya Trail could be close to about 75 to 80 miles an hour. Once that goes through, mm -hmm. I think the worst is over uh, south of that. Point. Yeah, our, our, our eyes are constantly drawn to the red, though. That's just kind of human nature, and that's mm -hmm. why they set up these maps to look the way they did. And Amy had talked about this earlier. I mean, we can still see a little bit of rotation in where the eye of the storm is, but but it's it's almost like it's this advancing, menacing wall that's mm -hmm. just moving northward through central Florida. Yeah, well, what's going on here in the eye is that the eye is exposed on the southwest okay. side, and we're getting this dry air working on it, and that's actually helping to force the storm to extend outward well off to the east from the actual eye itself, guys. And Tone, this is a calm look here of I-4 near Disney where this is really approaching, correct, correct Tony? We uh, want to show this picture for viewers. We're going to talk you through it. Uh, we've got this live look, and here you go, Tone, on the right side of your screen. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's kind of hard to see what's going on there, but uh, that moisture, that rain that you're referring to there is definitely working on into, uh, if not even already, uh, to the north of Disney over towards Universal. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be interesting to see if we've got a wider perspective of uh, the, the downtown Orlando area. I know we've got a bunch of uh, HD cams. We've got the one at Lake Eola. We've got the one in Midtown. Uh, that's going to get very intriguing and interesting here uh, as we go through uh, the next half hour or so. So I, I'm thinking, you know, it's this is a tough time. And actually, I'm thinking there's a lot of people that are being awakened by mm -hmm. this happening right now uh, and and kind of freaking out. Uh, and I guess the, the one word that we emphasize over and over again at this time is calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, knowing 
knowing your home and where to be in your home is, is key. You, you know, you you made fun of yourself, Meredith, with the football helmet the other day, but you know that that is not as crazy an idea as as it it, it can be. Uh, I don't think you're going to need a football helmet in this case, but the points driven. It was a bike helmet, Tony. Yeah, thank you yeah, very much. Well, it's, it's okay. Helmet's <laughs> no, but, a helmet. But I know people may tease, but it was one of those things of flying debris. We've yep. talked about it. You know, the tornadoes. You get your kids in the bathroom, or you get them in that interior wall area, and it's something that it may sound silly. I know it's not going to protect them if a tree's coming down on our house tone, but it's it's the flying debris and it's the thought of, you know what, if it gives me a little extra security, I'm going to do it to protect my kids. Uh, and, and I couldn't agree with you uh, any more than that. Here's the other thing. It's nighttime. Yeah. You know, you can't see you can't anything. See. You can yeah. hear it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you can't see it. And that's a little terrifying for Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And, you know, when, you, when we're looking at about three-fourths of the <clears throat> state of Florida population <clears throat> that doesn't have any power um, and... Mm -hmm. You know, and hopefully they have a device that's charged so they can at least hear us, right. uh, you know, and be a, a sort of a somewhat calming voice. Um, but, you know, n now, you know, we're looking at this and mm -hmm. saying, ooh, that just, that just does not look good. I mean, that's Lake Eola, and I don't know that I've ever seen that camera jump around nope, like that. Nope. That's mm -hmm. one of our steadiest cams, and, and, and that's, a, that's a great observation, Jim. You can see uh, there it is. It's, uh, it's basically, it's in Lake Eola right now, and it's moving uh, to the north. And I wouldn't be surprised that uh, as this comes up by 4 here, uh, just a little bit after 2 o'clock, uh, our station's been taking a beating. We've got a couple of leaks of the mm -hmm. ship, mm -hmm. uh, but we're probably going to uh, hear some of that uh, outside of the studio in the, other, in the newsroom. Yeah, I think it's going to be just an impressive, somewhat amazing sight tomorrow when we start to assess the damage with the trees down. With uh, I think I mentioned to you earlier, Tone, I had a neighbor that catfish in the front yard. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, there's going to be lots of things that we're going to be seeing some serious damage. Um, earlier this evening, we had a fatality, uh, someone driving on the roadways. I mean, these are the things that we had been bracing for for days of trying to avoid by telling folks to either evacuate the state or hunker down and stay home and just tune in and listen on the radio, uh, watch us on television, head to Facebook, our mobile apps, all of those platforms to keep you safe. We have so much tools, so many tools to keep people safe. Um, you, you know, we just we 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 push them there. We 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 try to give them the best advice we can. Um, you know, I really think Harvey helped us. You guys mm -hmm. made this observation earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw the devastation and, the, and, and what was going on there uh, in in Texas. And I really think that a lot of people here, uh, all across Florida, not just Central Florida, really really learned a lot from that lesson. Well, I think Tone too. Just seeing how large this yeah. storm system. Yeah. I mean, taking up the whole you know peninsula state of Florida, and you didn't know which way it was going to go. Mm -hmm. So I think people. Actually actually said, okay, you know, we're going to listen to this one because this looks uh, pretty intense. You know, the takeaway for me with this particular storm is, look, there's, there's always going to be a, a couple of chapters with every storm. And you don't want to rush to go to a location and have to come back. You, you learn this firsthand. Yeah. You, know, you, you evacuated your family to Tampa, uh, to Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. and then you had to evacuate them again to mm -hmm. get them out of there because we thought it was going there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when we, when we talk about these computer models, the science isn't exact yet. There's mm -hmm. never going to be a perfect model. Uh, you know, any meteorologist would say, we look at all these computer models, we look at all these trends, and we try to be, do the best we can. But the best thing you can really do is, is, as a forecaster is step back, take a look at what's going on, and then say, okay, if you want to know where to go, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not comfortable yet with sending you somewhere. However, at a certain point, you do become comfortable, mm -hmm. and that was pretty late in the period, unfortunately, this go-round. One more quick. Oh, sorry, Jimmy. Actually, actually I, I, keep, I keep looking at Orlando, mm -hmm. uh, the city of Orlando on the radar, and I see this big red mass moving towards it, and I think a lot of people are thinking, okay, I'm in Orlando, and I see this big red mass mm -hmm. moving in. So what does that mean? What are people in Orlando about to experience? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's do this for a second. Uh, Dylan's our producer back there and I know we like to show video a lot of times when we're showing pictures but I think at this point just to, to, to bring home what Jim is alluding to let's take the radar full screen here and I'm gonna have Kyle one more time uh, do a little ETA uh, because this one is bearing down now on a Koei uh, actually Kyle I liked it when you were in really tight there for a second if you don't mind just going back in for a second Bar, yeah, yeah like let's that. go in and then we'll pull it back out. Then you could put that fan on there like you, I think you're a, a, about to do. But I wanted to kind of get the, there we go. Let's just kind of just kind of drive that around. So here it is. It's coming into Pine Hills. It's getting ready to come into Okoe. We've seen it on the cam there in downtown Orlando. We go off towards Windermere. Uh, we've got the Florida Turnpike. Of course, we've got uh, uh, Popka Island Road right there. It is coming in right across that area, back towards SeaWorld. I drive uh, Disney, oh, the Seven Seas Drive area. 
That's the worst of it right now. And as Kyle has been showing us, it's kind of moving off to the north at about 14 miles an hour. And it's going to be venturing into the Lake Apopka area, Altamont Springs, Heathrow, um, over towards um, uh, Oakland, south side of Apopka. And then as we work away towards uh, Claremont and Orlando, uh, you can see some of the estimated times of arrival a little bit later on into Seminole County, Maitland, and Altamont Springs. This is uh, uh, the big punch of wind that's going to be coming at you here over the next half hour and what were those to 45. Speeds again? What were those speeds again, Tom? Generally speaking, we're running about 70 to 90, but there is going to be a couple of gusts, mm -hmm. especially on the north side of the eye in Lake County. It looks like it's going to be around 100, maybe 105 miles an hour. Pretty wow. intense, yeah. That is intense. Yeah. yeah. You, you really, the, the difficult thing about it, we would show you the velocity product, uh, but because of the way it's stretched out right now, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a fair representation. It would actually be underestimating the winds. Uh -huh. And folks, they're, they're listening, Tone. How about as they move into Seminole County then? What, what can uh, One person just writing me right now said, you know, can Tony update? what's left for us in Seminole as far as Irma? Uh, you know, in western Seminole County, especially west of I-4, I, I think you're going to see the strongest winds. But the farther east you go, you know, if you get towards Geneva and Chulyota, there's going to be a decent drop-off. We're not mm -hmm. talking about 100-mile-an-hour winds there. We're probably looking at about 70-mile-an-hour winds there, maybe briefly gusting uh, to, a, to a hurricane force or maybe a little bit more. But I'm more concerned about where you guys live, mm -hmm. uh, along and west of I-4, uh, you know, west of Longwood there, over towards uh, Heathrow, Wakaiba Springs, I think, you know, conceivably, uh, we can see 80 mile an hour wind gusts uh, up up that way, guys. Well, and and, and you talk about uh, I keep coming back to Orlando, and I don't even live in Orlando, but uh, there there are some of those older growth neighborhoods um, that are that are mm -hmm. all around like the 408 to to the south a little bit, a Mills. little bit north. Um, Winter Park back in 2004, uh, it took more than a month to clear out all the downed uh, laurel oak trees. I mean that was a that was a really big deal. That was like three fourths of all standing timber in Winter Park that got knocked down uh, in that storm. And we had the same conditions uh, leading up to Hurricane Irma uh, mm -hmm. that we did in this, uh, did in, you know, back 11 years ago. We had a whole bunch of rain, and then we had a really powerful storm come in, uh, and it kind of mowed everything down in its path. And I think people want to know, is that something that can happen again? So here's what happens. You know, you go through this extended period of time where there's a lull in the activity. You get the right. growth of trees, and, and, and we saw that with Charlie. A lot of uh, trees came down, as Jim is talking about. We haven't really had a storm of this size and magnitude come through. And on top of all of that, you guys, we've had a lot of rain. And when you get a lot of rain, the grounds are saturated, then you get these strong winds coming on in. Yeah. It makes it uh, easier for some of those trees that Jim has been describing mm -hmm. to come down. So it's going to be interesting to see what the landscape uh, uh, kind of looks like here tomorrow uh, when we wake up and we've got that first light, guys. Yeah, Tony, you know, one thing I've, I noticed in my backyard, well, we've got the pines, and they kind of sway. They mm -hmm. move with the gusts, you know, but you get a little concerned because you wonder eventually, well, are one of these going to come down? You just don't know. You don't, and especially at night, you know, you're hearing the wind, you know things are moving around, mm -hmm. and then, like, with pine trees, all of a sudden you hear... <laughs> The snap, and then yep. you get the boom. And mm -hmm. then it's gone. And that, exactly. Exactly. And those are the images, as you guys said, that we'll probably be seeing tomorrow. Many, many more of those. All right, coming up at uh, 2 o'clock on uh, Monday morning, 9-11, uh, our look uh, at uh, downtown Orlando from our Lake Eola Sky Cam. Usually that's uh, one of the most tranquil scenes that you will see, uh, but not on this night as uh, Hurricane Irma and all of its fury is marching through Central Florida. Uh, people doing their best to, to make their last stand, but this is, the, this is the, the peak of the storm for the heart of Central Florida, and it's happening right now. Yeah, millions of people without power. Uh, nearly 6.5 million were ordered to evacuate the state of Florida uh, throughout the week. We know that thousands of people are in sh thousands of people are decided to go to shelters, uh, many of those in our areas. And really the big thing will be continuing to watch this as it makes its trek uh, through our area. Uh, we're talking about the attractions and, and these wind speeds that could reach up to 100 miles per hour. Um, I know that just at you know, our local airports, we saw it at uh, the executive airport, Orlando Executive, 76 miles per hour, also Orlando International at 77. And I think we marked just a little while ago, 94 miles per hour, and that was in Lakeland. Yeah, uh, Melbourne Air Airport, uh, a friend of mine just sending in uh, a, a, a little over 100 miles an hour at Melbourne Airport. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we are we are far from being over uh, with this storm uh, at all. I want to kick things over to meteorologist Amy Sweezy, kind of give us a rundown of where we are and where we're headed. Yeah, we're going to talk a little more about some of those gusts and, of course, the overall picture of where Irma is and where it is.
is going. We still do have this tornado Thanks, watch Lauren. in effect. It was actually uh, ex extended uh, till 11 o'clock in the morning. So we still have eight more hours for our northern counties. That's because the biggest winds are still about four hours away from Marion County. Also Putnam and Flagler are included in this as well. You can see the whole, you know, storm system here. The outer edges of rain all the way up into South Carolina. The heaviest rain is right over the attractions now. And then we still have this really strong feeder band wrapping around it that's got a lot of rotation in it. That's going to head to the north, but we're still going to see that potential for some of these storms to spin up, which is why we have that tornado watch in effect. So no warnings in effect for the tornadoes, but this is definitely the area that we're watching here. Of course, Tony was just uh, zoomed into this a little bit ago, showing this whole line making its way to the north at about 14 miles per hour. So that means the winds in here at 90, even up to 100 miles per hour, headed right to downtown Orlando in the next 10 to 15 minutes. A Fairview Shores at 224, South Apopka at 227, into Apopka at 233. I had someone on Twitter in Apopka just a little while ago say, oh my goodness, this is so bad. When is it going to be over? It, not yet. You still have a half an hour before the strongest winds even get to you. So it has been a long night. I know for a lot of you, it has been for, you know, you hear the noises and you don't know what's going on and you can't really see because it's dark. Uh, sit tight. We have a few more hours to go before the worst of this is over here in Central Florida. Uh, Orlando, uh, a popka country. I'm not sure what that is, but that's where the storm is headed. I'll show you this last thing here with this line moving up into Marion County. It's about four hours away. So we're talking about 6 a.m. Those strongest winds moving up into the Ocala area. And by the way, once the winds get there, they'll be a little bit lower, but we're still going to be talking about hurricane force winds at about 75 miles per hour as those 90 mile per hour winds get up into Marion County in the next few hours. Jim Meredith. All right, Amy, thanks so much. Yeah, critical time uh, mm -hmm. bearing down on downtown Orlando, neighborhoods to the north, uh, the high density population area, and uh, a lot of people without power mm -hmm. kind of hunkered down in their homes and probably wondering what's happening next. Yeah, hopefully that people there, our, our viewers are just listening to us uh, over the radio, uh, joining in on Facebook if their phones are charged up in power. Um, you know, that's the, the sense here. We just want to bring you that sense of calm, let you know what's happening so you have all the information of all the facts, especially as these strong wind gusts move through. And I think that just for so many people, they probably thought, okay, it's going to get nasty here at some point, but this thing's over, oh, by well, you know, the West Coast, and when we're talking Fort Myers, Tampa, and then just, you know, a few hours Ago, we saw that slight turn and it was like, wait a second, I four now in its sights. So I think for a lot of people, we did our best to say, hey guys, you know, before you're going to bed, this thing is far from over. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's going to be very strong right through our uh, areas. Well, and, and not just that, but for all the people, and uh, there are a number of shelters that uh, yeah. that are in Central Florida right now that uh, have lost power. Uh, a couple of them have, you know, kicked on their backup generators, uh, uh, but the generators can't power everything, so uh, the situation is a little bit uncomfortable for them, but at least they, they have a roof over their head. Um, we did hear about one situation where they were having a problem with their backup generator, so the, even the, the fail-safe system uh, did not work completely, but uh, it's, it really comes down, uh, the bottom line tonight is about safety uh, but I, I, I keep I keep staring at this red mass in the middle of the screen uh, that's that stretches basically from Orlando West I mean it's it goes almost to Tampa it's phenomenally large uh, and what was the eye seems to just have uh, spread out into this uh, massive advancing wall of trouble and Jim I'm playing around with uh, an app called radar scope and uh, it's it's my favorite weather app, but what I'm doing is just kind of plugging and playing over Orlando along that red line, and at about uh, three to four thousand feet above the surface of the Earth, I'm looking at about close to 95 mile an hour winds. Not saying it's 95 mile an hour winds now uh, down at the surface, but if you're in a high rise in downtown, mm -hmm. yep. uh, then that's not a good place to be right now. So there's a lot of wind. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and. Um, you know, it's lifted north, so just hang in there, give it about 15, 20 minutes, and I think we're going to be in better shape in, in the downtown area. Yeah. Then it will lift back up to the north. Good, I'm sorry. No, no, not at all. It's just I'm replying to some of the folks that are obviously on social media reaching out to us. Uh, earlier, just a little while ago, I said, you know, Lake and Scepter County says that I will move through your area. You could feel those Cat 2, you know, wind gusts. Uh, you know, one gentleman saying, man, it is so, it is so strong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, yeah. Tone? I mean, yeah. so uh, the best we can do right now, we know we're here at the studio, but just relate to you, and many of us have covered these storms 
storms for years, you know what it's like to be in them. It's just an unnerving feeling and you're sitting at home and you're listening to us, but you know, it's dark outside and all you're hearing is the winds howling. You don't know what's going on outside your property. And here's the interesting thing. So you're, you're probably getting little uh, messages now on your phone beeping from, from West and West.com putting out the, the statement that it's been downgraded to a category one. You know, that that's the winds at the surface. But again, uh, we go up and we take a look at these apps here and mm -hmm. just above the surface of the ground, whether you're two, three, four thousand feet, uh, it's not category one. Right. You know? mm -hmm. And you get one of these thunderstorms that come on through right. and that transfer of wind energy, especially with dry air uh, coming in back uh, towards uh, the, the south side of the eye, uh, that transports that wind energy uh, down to the south, uh, to the ground, and you get the camera like that bouncing around. So this is something that we're going to have to watch again uh, very carefully. The other big story here is Lake County. That's the other area I want to kind of zoom in on here. And I tell you what, uh, in Lake County, on Lake in Lake County here, I think we actually have winds that are even stronger uh, up above the, the, the surface there. And coming over towards the Florida Turnpike there. And there's Kyle uh, kind of uh, zooming in to that area that we really need to focus in on. That's Claremont, Ferndale, uh, the 429 over towards Mineola. Uh, we have uh, some very, very intense winds right now moving through this general area. Again, mm -hmm. the good news is uh, we don't have any of those wicked tornado warnings that we're coming at rapid fire right now, but we have some pretty intense winds that are coming across here uh, through Lake County uh, that we definitely want to make sure that people there know what's coming their way. You go up to the north of that area, there's a Coey uh, over towards Leesburg, give it another uh, about 15, 30 minutes, and that's going to be up in that area. Then 45 minutes going to be up towards the villages. Again, some very, very intense winds now. I'm moving over the Florida Turnpike, Lake Apopka, uh, downtown Orlando and closing in on West 2 Studios, guys. Yeah, one thing that we haven't seen with uh, this particular part of the system that we saw all day today was uh, uh, we haven't had a tornado watch or warning in quite some time, which yeah. thankfully uh, that's happened. Well, yeah, right. We always talked about the right front quadrant and, and, and you know, the, the storm system now is lifting to the north. And Amy was showing the graphic here just a couple minutes ago. The only areas that are still in the tornado watching are our far northern county. So mm -hmm. as this continues to lift to the north, uh, a couple things things are going to happen here. Number one, the severe weather threat is going to be ending. And number two, uh, with time, uh, at least a core of the strongest winds will, will be moving out. Mm -hmm. And after that comes through, uh, the worst is going to be over for you. And, and there we go again. Let's give some more ETAs. We cannot do this enough. Uh, the Citrus Bowl, downtown Orlando. Uh, we've got about uh, another five minutes for the worst of it to be over downtown Orlando in the Citrus Bowl. Camping uh, World Stadium. Yeah, can't, exactly. Thank you. Uh, old habits <laughs> never die young. Amon Verde, Fairview Shores. Uh, there's Astatula, 252. And then as we work our way towards Wakaiva, uh, Kiowa Springs and the Bob White Field there, 3305, 306 Heathrow. Uh, over where you guys are, you, that, that, that's where the, the core of that uh, wind field is going to be coming on in, guys. So it's what, what, we're moving along about 15, 16, Fit. 17 miles an hour. Yep. So yep. It's, a, it's a pretty good sprint. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were out there just running around, that's how fast you'd run. Yep. And, yeah. and, and you know, the thing of it, too, is you guys have been in these hurricanes. When you get winds, you know, 100 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, the vibration mm -hmm. that you hear on the windows is eerie. I mean, and you hear it, and you're like, is it going to pop? Right. Am I okay? And it feels like an eternity. I mean, it might be moving by, but it feels like, okay, this is lasting way too long. Yeah. One other thing I do want to do here, while well, we've got meteorologist Kyle Gravelin here, I want him to just kind of walk everybody through uh, the the water and the flood warning here. And then Amy's going to give us, I think, a little bit of a tour of what's going on uh, with the rest of the storm system. Kyle, you're mic'd up. You're ready to go there. So once you're going to take it away and show everybody uh, the incredible rainfall amounts thus far. Good morning, by the way. Yeah, good morning, Tony. And yeah, we were talking about this right before we kind of came on here. And what is kind of remarkable uh, when it comes to Seminole County, and we're going to look at radar estimated rainfall. And before we show this, I do want to note that with tropical systems, Radar sometimes tends to underestimate some of these numbers. So let's go to this map here. We're going to pull up. You see tons of colors and I want to put a special focus here on Seminole County. And I'm doing that because we'll click on a few of these and you get some radar estimated numbers, eight, eight point eight inches. These are impressive numbers. But what stands out here, we had Matthew uh, a little less than a year ago and Seminole County also saw some of the heaviest inland rains from Matthew. Matthew and Irma could not be more different 
Uh, that was in an October system. It was weaker. It was the Atlantic coast instead of the Gulf Coast or near the Gulf Coast. And yet still Seminole County found their way uh, to some incredibly intense inland rain and flooding potential and now flooding threat. Uh, of course, that is likely to continue through the overnight. There is still plenty of rain coming down, some heavier rain right now. Longwood, uh, Altamont Springs as well, uh, and that's continuing to advance north. That's along that same uh, swath of wind that Tony has been breaking down for you. So all kinds of rain around here and uh, you know, this is a flooding potential that at least exists into daytime tomorrow. So even though the rains will be subsiding, the winds will be subsiding as that center works its way to the north. Uh, the flooding threat is there, not just Seminole County, but uh, put a special focus on it just in this particular case, because the last two tropical systems to have a uh, direct impact on central Florida just brought very intense rains uh, to Seminole County. For now, though, Amy Sweezy has an update over there. Yeah, let's start off with this wide picture here of the satellite and the radar together. You'll be able to see the center of the storm here making its way northward. You can see those feeder bands still wrapping around it. And then, of course, the uh, center of the storm is the location that we are most concerned about 50 to 65 mile per hour sustained winds right over the attractions southern lake county that's lifting north but we have gusts inside of here 80 to 100 miles per hour so that is going to be heading up through claremont leesburg moving up into at least the eastern part of uh, or i'm sorry the western part of seminole county uh, so you can kind of see that it's over here uh, to the west as opposed to the east side of the state but these winds here moving northward at about 14 miles per hour. That's where the whole storm system is heading northward. The whole hurricane uh, getting into South Apopka within the next 15 minutes by about 2:30 uh, into Apopka uh, at 2:33. So that's where it's headed. But it's going to be moving up into Bushnell, then eventually beyond that, closer to 3 o'clock into Claremont and Leesburg, and then uh, Sanford. I think you're going to get some of these stronger gusts, maybe not quite as much, just because the storm will be heading north as opposed to over to the north and east. Now that big cluster of wind. Uh, with those gusts at 80 to 100 miles per hour will be heading northward and then making its way to Ocala. Now, assuming it continues moving at about 14 miles per hour, it will be right over Ocala in about four hours or so. So that's about six o'clock this morning. Uh, it's about 57 miles away from there now. At least it was when I measured it here and you can see it's already moved uh, about 10 miles or so because it is moving uh, at about 14 miles per hour. So that kind of gives you some perspective on the timing. We are still going to be dealing with this wind for the next several hours. Uh, at least until six o'clock in Marion County, although as the system heads north and interacts with land, it is going to spread out a little bit and weaken just a bit. So we'll see those gusts up to maybe 70, 75 miles per hour instead of 80 to 100 by the time it gets to Ocala. Notice though, there's not a big difference uh, with those winds. Now these are the sustained winds that we've seen here just recently. A lot of you have asked about the wind direction. Uh, the winds wrap around the center of the storm. So basically they be coming in out of the east and going from the south and east uh, off to the north. But as the storm lifts to the north, the winds will actually flip around the center and the winds will be the opposite. So uh, right now we've got those sustained winds and you can see just really blowing around on some of our cameras there uh, out on the roads. You can't even really see what's going on. I assume it's rain. I assume it maybe is lights in the distance because it's just so very windy. Those uh, sustained winds now, that's in the Kirkman area, kind of right by Universal Orlando, where we have that line of strongest winds. But look at OIA, a 45 mile per hour sustained wind recently, 48 now in Sanford and 29 Daytona Beach, 39 Palm Coast. So it's not just you know, our southern areas with these rain bands whipping in two off to the north. We're still getting those really strong sustained winds all up and down uh, the east side of the state. That's what we were talking about all week is that really no matter where the center of the storm goes, whether it goes up the east coast, whether it comes right up the middle or whether it goes a little bit farther west, it's such a huge storm that all of central Florida needed to be prepared. So I know a lot of you took that warning and took heed and you're now uh, inside, possibly with no power. Uh, uh, likely with some, you know, trees down in your yard and uh, look at these gusts, 66 mile per hour gusts just recently reported at the airport in Sanford. Uh, there's a picture of Lake Eola there in downtown where we had a 68 mile per hour gust at the airport.
airport, so not exactly downtown, but still that is where that line of wind is getting very close uh, and it's actually gusts even stronger than that back on the west side of Orange County, a little bit uh, inland and west from the airport. 64 mile per hour gust recently in Leesburg and 53 in Daytona Beach. Uh, latest winds now down to 85 miles per hour, so that's our latest measurement as of 2 a.m. from the Hurricane Center and notice this other little thing, little change now in the last hour moving north northwest at 15. So no longer moving due north. Census made landfall at nine o'clock on Sunday morning uh, in the lower keys. It's the center has basically just been moving to the north. So that's why it's kind of a little bit inland here, uh, a little bit to the east of even Tampa. But now that it starts moving north and northwest, it's going to start heading a little bit more along the Gulf Coast and ride right up the center of Florida as it starts to fall apart a little bit. So that means by eight o'clock this morning, uh, just a couple of hours from now, we'll see the center of the storm here. Uh, with winds at 75 moving beyond Marion County and then continuing north uh, likely to the east of Tallahassee. I know a lot of you have kids up there. Uh, some of you maybe uh, have family that uh, evacuated to there. Uh, just know that by the time the storm gets there, it's still going to be wind. It's still going to be rain, but it's going to be weakening significantly from where it is now. And uh, Tony, it looks like here too with this new update with those winds coming down. We're now at a category one storm, of course, with those maximum winds at 85. All right, Amy, thanks a whole bunch for that uh, that update there. I, I think we have Adrian outside as the worst mm -hmm. is coming in. So yep. let's go out there and uh, see how he's doing, what he's uh, feeling out there. Adrian, take it away. Uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. We already know that the, the wind is not really our friend here uh, during the hurricane. And, and really, this is not something you'd want to be your friend. It's very shifty right now. I, so I know that it's hard for you guys to see uh, behind here what the rain is actually doing, what the wind is doing to the rain. Uh, I'm assuming that that's a transformer and not lightning that just uh, popped off behind me. I don't hear anything, though. Uh, the rain is coming in like this, and then it's coming in like this. And over here that I can see to my left, it's just wrapping around one of our light posts out here outside the station. We're looking now at our downtown camera looking uh, over Lake Eola into downtown, and you can see the shaking right there. This is actually uh, where I'm standing right here outside of our studios up until this last gust right here uh, was a little bit calmer than it had been when I was out here an hour ago. But of course, that's picked up now as that starts to come through even more. Hopefully, it's going to get through here fast. Listen to what Amy says. It's moving 14 miles an hour. Uh, some some good news. Hopefully, I talked to uh, the Osceola emergency management team uh, down there about 15 minutes ago. That storm, of course, has already passed. The, the big brunt of the storm has already passed through the Kissimmee area where I was earlier. Uh, they say they've got some localized flooding. They've got some localized damage reports. They're still asking everyone to adhere to that 6 p.m. curfew that they've set for the entire county. So even though it looks like everyone's out of the woods, they don't want people on the roads. They don't want people out of their house. Uh, that curfew going until 6 p.m. tonight because they want to make sure that they can get out there and do full damage assessments. Now, I have not talked personally to Orange County, but I would imagine they're going to tell us the same thing. They want people to adhere to that curfew because as this comes through, these winds are continuing, at least for now, they're going to subside, but they don't want people outside. There's still some danger there. There's still the chance that power lines could be down that you'd walk into or trees could still fall now that the, the ground is more saturated because of all the rain that we have. So they just want people to stay inside. That way they can also uh, attempt to get more and more people's power back on because we know that's been a huge issue here in Central Florida tonight as Irma has made its way up here. But again, just out here outside our studio, as you can tell, uh, I said earlier, this was sort of our bellwether plant, this palm tree. Uh, and, and even now, as I talk, it's like the wind knows that I'm going to talk about it. And so it decides to start gusting again. Uh, this is sort of the this, this situation that we're seeing outside of our studios. I know just a little further south uh, down in the Winter Park and uh, uh, North Orlando area along 1792. Uh, a big section of that lost power about 115 as the storm started to push through. So uh, hopefully people are, are able to see the Facebook lives and, and listen on the radio and, and sort of understand what's going on. But uh, really just judging by what you guys are saying on the forecast, in the forecast. This is something we're going to deal with for a little bit longer and, and hopefully uh, we don't have to see these winds and this 
uh, the sustained winds and the rain for too much longer, guys. Yeah, I think I think you're about to get your wish uh, just based on on what we're seeing here, Adrian. Uh, thanks so much for for being the one to be outside and tell us what's going on out there. Um, it, 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 and I think what is interesting about this, and, and I'm, I'm kind of looking over your shoulder and watching the radar play out all at the same time, um, you know, once it's over, it's like really over, you know? I mean, it just kind of slams shut when it's done. The well, relief that folks are going to feel, because we're in the thick of it now, Tim. Uh, you're right. So there's the cam bouncing around there real quickly. And, and, and Jim made a great observation. That That's one of our sturdiest camps. Mm -hmm. and, and when that one's bouncing around, you yeah. know you've got something pretty special coming on through. I want to go ahead and pop up that radar again, full screen. We'll come back to the cam here in a second. I want to drive through this big wedge of wind that's coming on through. It's, it's, it's incredibly important that we do that. Uh, I think all three of our phones are blowing up and people are, are talking <laughs> about uh, what's going on here. People are afraid. They are. Yeah. Hey, Colin, do me, do me a quick favor. Let, let's clear the slate there. Sure. And I just want you to drive from left to right. I want to see the towns right where the core of that red is there. We'll go from Sumter County. There you go. And uh, we'll kind of drive east gradually. I'll just kind of go with you here. There's 50. Uh, we got Bay Lake Road. We've got uh, Bay Lake. We've got Groveland. We are head east now over towards Claremont. And that is where the core of the strongest winds are right now. We head a little bit north of 50 here. And you can see how the winds extend pretty strongly now up towards Montverde, the south side of Lake Apopka. So are up these about 80? The, what are these? Uh, these are, this is the reflectivity product, probably where we're looking at winds close we, to. We had a 64 in Leesburg. That's okay. out ahead of it. That, okay. That's Just not even bingo. the core. Right, okay. exactly. So this is the core. Yeah, I just so, want to give so, them a little so, idea of what they're, what they're feeling out right, there. Right, right. I, I love it. She's getting the play-by-pay. -play. People want to know what's <laughs> going on right now. you got to love social media. Uh, so Montverde, Coe, very conceivable that we're looking at uh, 80, 85 mile an hour winds. There's the 429. You guys obviously know that very well. Apopka Island over towards Winter Park, Orlando, and Altamont Springs. Uh, you can see a very uh, sharp cutoff to the uh, that big core of wind. Doesn't quite extend down to Bithlow, although there's some mm -hmm. decent uh, uh, wind and rain there. Now, the other thing that I wanted to do since we've gone from, from uh, west to east is have Kyle take a look at just Orange County into Seminole County. We'll zoom into that area as, as as much as we can and then put the fan in there so we can give an ETA of uh, what's going to be coming in through Heathrow, when it's going to happen, mm -hmm. on it to Paisley, uh, as we'll kind of widen out that view here, because if we were trying to draw that fan for you there, it just wouldn't make any sense. It'd be kind of blown off the screen. So let's take a look here at 14 miles an hour, uh, where it's going to be as it uh, continues to lift up to the north. And we'll give you some times here and you can see uh, Wakiva, Wakiva Springs, about okay. 248, Tavares, 257, Mount Dora High School in the city of Mount Dora and Eustis between 3 and about 317. As we drive it more to the west here real quickly, yep. let's go back into Lake County. Uh, this is an area on the northern eye there that I think uh, is going to be uh, seeing some pretty decent winds. You've got uh, Leesburg, Mount Dora, uh, about 254, 301, uh, Wildwood, Fruitland Park at about 308. Let's make this wider. Yeah, because exactly. It does look like Mount Dora would be in play here, so let's make yep. sure that we're kind of covering this. We'll go all the way back toward Altima and then we'll go north here um, because, yes, yeah, certainly Mount Dora is there. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, some of these folks, you just can't help but feel from them here. I mean, you know, our viewers, we just want to keep them feeling safe. And, you know, one woman here is like, the winds are feeling crazy here in Waterford. I mean, just that uneasiness. I, I mean, they're just asking, you know, what's the time frame? When is this thing going to be leaving East Orlando. Well, East Orlando is almost done. Okay. You know, we just showed that picture there. I think by the time we get to about uh, 245, they're they're done with the strongest of the winds. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still going to have a breezy night, but nothing right. like what's coming through yeah. uh, right now. So we got to get through that. Uh, folks up there in uh, northwestern Orange and northern Orange County and to southwest Seminole County, I'm surprised uh, your phone isn't blowing up, Jim, because there's going to be a fairly significant burst of wind here mm -hmm. uh, as we go through about the next uh, uh, 15 to 20 minutes, and, and uh, that's going to include the uh, the Wakaiwa Springs area at about 238. My watch says 225. So in Oviedo the next 10, uh, Oviedo is not as bad. It's, it's as far as enough bad. to the east. They're going to get okay. some decent close, wind though. Yeah. It's close. Um, you know, they're probably looking at uh, 75, 80 mile an hour winds. Yeah, yeah, and then back towards Sumter County there. We'll scooch it over just a little bit more towards the west. Uh, we'll give you some live pictures of Sanford while, while Kyle's uh, uh, driving the machine a little bit more to the west. Again, 14 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour to the north. Uh, we go from Bushnell head north. 2.30 there, South Sumter High School, uh, back towards Sumterville, Lake Panasofsky, 
Floral City and Inverness between about 3 and about 325. Now, Marion County, we're not into your county yet. We're only going out uh, the 14 miles an hour that the, 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 the center of the storm is coming through Sumter County and, and, and Lake County. So once we get into your area there, uh, we'll, we'll continue to uh, kind of drill this home for you. But you can see the arrival times on our wind gusts in that little red strip there. Uh, we're noticing the winds upstairs uh, quite high at about three to 4,000 feet. And some of that's coming down to the ground. So we'll have to watch that again very carefully. You know, it's a pretty, it's a pretty wide swath that this is coming. Cutting here. I mean, you know, uh, 408 at Hiawassee getting blown around there. Thankfully, Oof, nobody, uh, you know, stopping to pay tolls there. You don't have to now. Um, but uh, I mean, uh, it, on the map, it always seems smaller than what it really is. But I mean, we're looking at, mm -hmm. at that that wall of, of red across probably 70, 80, maybe even more miles across. Mm -hmm. That's big. The the hurricane force winds were going out earlier, 80 miles uh, from the center. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you get an exposed eye and you get that dry air sometimes coming in on the on the south side of it, uh, you're able to do two things. Stretch the winds out and bring those stronger winds down to the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that is clearly what we've been seeing here over the last hour. Boy, mm -hmm. I tell you what, look at that camera yeah, just bouncing just around. Yeah. Is that yeah. a Lake Eola, Cam? Looks like it. Yeah, that's Lake yeah. Eola. Thanks, guys. How about Appreciate that? that. So, yeah, it's. Uh, that's pretty wild stuff right there. All right. So Irma here, just setting the scene once again for our viewers, Jimmy, as we approach the 2.30 hour. Yeah, and we're, we're going to try to get a little bit of ahead of it right now. Um, West News' Michelle Meredith uh, had set up camp up in Sanford, which is going to get uh, some of this. Uh, maybe not a full-on blow, but it's going to get some of this. Uh, and there she is. Uh, Michelle, <laughs> give, us a, give us an update on uh, the situation there in Sanford. Well, we're still here at the 7-Eleven on West 25th Street, and again, we're here inside the car wash, and here's what we can see from our vantage point. Now, officials in Seminole County, they warned that the folks here could expect hurricane force winds up to gust up to 100 miles per hour, starting at 1 through 6 a.m., and they begged people, don't drive, don't come out, but yet we saw at the end of the driveway there, a car that was coming down the road and stalled, and then uh, someone in a big pickup truck, and we're gonna move to our left there, someone in a big pickup truck pushed the car out of the road into the parking lot here, and I think that they, they rescued them. Now, we talked earlier when we were live about a stop sign that was at the end of this parking lot and how it just disappeared. One minute it was there, the next minute it wasn't. And also, look at this sign here. This is the one we think is next to go. And we talked, whoa, now we're talking some wind gust. And we talked earlier about how we thought it might uh, come off and hit our truck. I want to show you that we did, we did move our truck in the event it does Go with the wind. And that's what's going on here in Sanford, you guys. Um, you know what? It, one minute doesn't seem like that much is going on, and the next minute, boom. And they're telling us that's what we can expect till 6 in the morning here. Mm. Yeah, actually, your your boom is still coming. Uh, it hasn't <laughs> quite the boom. The big boom <laughs> hasn't arrived yet. I'm not trying to, you know make you feel bad or anything there, Michelle. But it's on the way, but once the once the boom subsides, then you're pretty much done. So you're you're where you are right there in Sanford, you're in the you're in the firing line for a good half hour right now. Hang tight, Michelle. All right, well I'll tell you it's, it's already taken out our camera. We're using my iPhone right now. So um, good to know. We've got a lot more to go. Well we appreciate yeah. it, Michelle. Yeah, That's for work. sure. Being resourceful uh, like yeah, that. Love yeah. that. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I, I remember during Hurricane Charlie when it uh, came ashore in Punta Gorda and basically raced up I four. Mm -hmm. We had we had people set up all over central Florida and, and by the time it was getting ready to exit off the coast of Daytona Beach, everyone's gear had been ruined mm -hmm. by the weather with the exception of one of those cameras that we have on the uh, pole of a truck. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Live trucks, they have a pole that goes up and there's a camera on the end of there. And that was the last camera that was working in the field that day. It's tough out there working in hurricanes. And my, my hats go off to, my hat goes off to everybody who's out there, uh, you know, trying to do this and, and uh, keep people safe. Uh, it's just really, really tough duty. Well, yeah, our teams are just trying to bring everybody at home, the visuals of in their neighborhoods, what's happening. They're definitely staying safe, but they want people to see what's going on so they stay safe. And, and, and you know, they're willing to, to brave these conditions. Uh, Tone, Gail Pascal-Brown, she's 
is one of those people. She's Aww. outside our studio. And Gail, yes. it's, it's, it's right here, you know, our Winter Park area. Absolutely, Irma. absolutely. The winds are up, the rains are up. I can tell you, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that tree back there. You can't see it as far back as the one that's under the light. And uh, I'm just a little bit wondering what that's going to look like in the morning. By the way, every time Tony says anything about Okoe, I, uh, you know, basically am, uh, is, that's my neighborhood. So I, I've been on Facebook. Uh, some of our neighbors have been keeping a close watch, and they've been describing some of the wind, some of the rain as being relentless. And some of them were saying that they were very concerned and they were scared. But they're watching and they're keeping an eye on everything and, 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 and watching all the red. You know, the only time I saw something red like this is if I had a bad grade on my paper. Red never is good. I know that is right. But uh, you guys are doing a great job as far as telling us what to do. But it is here. I mean, we are waiting to see what it's going to look like in the morning. But the concern has been, you know, what is Irma going to bring? We have seen some down trees. I've seen some down power lines. Uh, we've heard the sirens go off in Winter Springs. Uh, no injuries right now, but of course, Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs uh, earlier this morning, I should say, or last night, I'm getting my days all mixed up, basically was very concerned when a motorist was killed at uh, uh, southbound on 417. Uh, it just is a testament to, you know, our heart goes out to the families of that driver. But it also tells us, you know, we need to stay off the roads during this time because it becomes a very frightful, a very scary situation. Guys, I don't know. I mean, I, I want to ask you. I, I, we all are human. We have our own concerns. Yeah. I'm just wondering, are you concerned as well about your own homes? And are you guys set? Because people are asking me the same question. Oh, sure, Gail. I mean, I have some neighbors that have been so kind and just updating me throughout the day. Yeah. Um, you know, one was sweet enough to say, you know, Mayor, when this is all over, I can go take a look. And I said, I, I sure appreciate that. But if anything's really bad, you know, just let the officials and it's locked up. And she Absolutely. goes, well, if it's, she said, if it's really bad, I'll climb through the window for you. <laughs> I said, you don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but I appreciate it. But I mean, this is a time where, especially with what we do, you know, neighbors are helping out. They know that yeah. we had to kiss our babies goodbye and, and say, you guys go to a safe location. I'm going to be at the studio with with my my home away from home mm -hmm. and uh, it brings you a calm feeling but uh, you, you don't know what's going on out there and you just want people to be safe that's the big thing you know the, the houses you, you know the governor said it you know that stuff can be rebuilt but your family can yeah I, I want to reduce uh, Gail's anxiety because she mentioned when I mentioned Okoe her, mm -hmm. her adrenaline gets going she's a little concerned it looks like uh, Gail I'm not sure if you can still hear us out there that the worst is probably over for Okoe uh, compared to what came through a short time ago mm -hmm. uh, but now the focus is on uh, Northwest Orange County. We really got to focus in on the Lake of Popka, Zellwood, Mount Plymouth area. I'm going to ask Kyle Gravelin to kind of zoom in mm -hmm. uh, 